It's the most wonderful time of the year. Hey guys, it's Aaron back with another review for you. Today is day 17 of my Halloween month, and today I'm going to be talking about a horror comedy film titled Warm Bodies. Matt, this is for you, buddy. Love you. Alrighty, guys, so I've got my notes. Let's dive right in. Alright, so Warm Bodies, released February 1st, 2013, directed by Jonathan Levine, starring Nicholas Holt, Teresa Palmer, Leo Tipton, Dave Franco, John Malkovich, Rob Corjoy, and Corey Hardrick. Anyway, the plot is a zombie plague hits, um, it's broken out all over the world, and Nicholas Holt seems to be, is a zombie, and he seems to be, uh, regaining his former self after meeting Teresa Palmer's character, who was a human. So <clears throat> it's, it's very, it's a very unique story and I'll give it that right off the bat. And I'll admit when this, when this first came out, I remember seeing previews and I did not want to see it. I just didn't, to me, it didn't seem interesting enough. Um, and I, I'll let you know. So yeah, First of all, I just want to. Uh, Nicholas Holt was chosen. Uh, he actually won a Choice Movie Breakout Award for his performance in this, which I, I think is kind of similar to um, like a Nickelodeon award. Which I'm not, you know, I mean, he won a reward, he won an award regardless. It just wasn't a major association award. So, like I said, I'm not, you know, whatever. But yes, yeah, so like I said, right off the bat, let's talk about Rob, Rob Corjoy. That is Jamie's husband. My fiance would leave me in a second for him, believe it or not. If you check it out, look, just look him up. And it, the reason he's so uh, uh, threatening to me is because he's just a normal looking dude. So it's like, you know, she, she loves Johnny Depp and all kinds of other, you know, hot guys. It's like, okay, fine. I can't compare to them. But uh, Rob Corsman would, he worries me. So, um, but yeah, he's he was the best part of Harold and Kumar 2, uh, Guantanamo Bay, if you've seen that. I, I love him too, don't get me wrong. But uh, yeah, that's just a little fun fact for you guys. And, you know, we have John Malkovich, and I was like, okay, are we going to have a calm John Malkovich or a crazy John Malkovich? And it's a little bit of both. He leans more on the uh, calm in this one, but there's definitely some, you know, John, the Malkovichian moments in this, uh, as it were, and it's, it's, it's funny, you know, but so one thing I noticed too, right off the bat was only in a comedy film would the world be ending and a zombie apocalypse happening and the people would be like, oh, sweet. And that does happen in this. There's a moment where, you know, it's just like, oh, sweet. I'm like, yeah. I mean, until you really look at the logistics of a zombie apocalypse, but I myself, I'm guilty of it. You know, my neighbor and I, Jacob, growing up, we were, we'd always be like, we had this plan. Not that we wanted it to happen, but we had this plan, you know, down to the T, what would happen if it ever happened? We just go, you know, I'd just go right next door and be like, dude, it's here. <laughs> but um, it seems to be that's, you know, kind of the theme is that people think that it's, it's pretty awesome. But uh yeah, there, there's also this one thing I noticed. I was like, did Jack Black cameo in this film? Because there's this one zombie at one point. It looks, I mean, I swear it's Jack Black. I couldn't find anything that said he was in it, but maybe he was and did a favor, you know, for uh, the director. And was just like, eh, screw it. You don't have to pay me. Or maybe it wasn't Jack Black and just a guy that looked identical. Because I'm telling you, this dude looks identical. The same thing also I noticed later. There's a zombie that looks like Danny Filth from the band Cradle of Filth. And once again, I'm like, did is that really him or, you know, anyway, it's pretty awesome. Um, so I, I was, even if it wasn't them, it was, it was really cool that I think that, you know, it was like, all oh, that looks like him. So that was pretty fun. Um, they, at one point, uh, you know, so, so Nicholas Holt, you know, he, he remembers things about, you know, his past life and everything. And there's this one point where he plays, uh, the Guns N' Roses song Patience for her and his heart actually pumps a beat. And I'm like, I, I believe that that would be, you know what I mean? That would, that would be a song that would do that. And actually the first song that they hear together as a couple or whatever they're becoming is Hungry Heart by the boss. And I'm okay with that. That's a good song. That's a good one. Uh, but, uh, then he he plays Bob Dylan as the romantic song. And I'm like, Bob Dylan? 
I, I don't know. Bob Dylan, I, I love his lyrics. I think he's a great lyricist. Nobody touches him on that. But, dude, have you heard the guy sing? <laughs> it's very, very rough. So I don't I don't get that one. I really don't. I, that, Bob Dylan, I mean, maybe me singing Bob Dylan or somebody that has a better voice than Bob Dylan. You know, Miles Kennedy singing Bob Dylan. I could see it. I could get behind that. But Bob Dylan singing your... Anyway. But, um... But yeah, but you know, just back on John Malkovich, he, he has so many, his mannerisms are so unmatched and so great in this because he's just, he just does these things and it's like only John Malkovich could do that. It's a really, he's just, it's like if you've seen the film Burn After Reading, he's very, you just got to watch it and you're like. Yeah, only he, like the movie Con Air. I mean, I think the only actor that could have been opposed to Nicolas Cage in that and given Nicolas Cage a run for the campiness, you know, is John Malkovich. And they do it very well. It's it's very awesome. Um, but, you know, so so overall, the the makeup and everything does look very good on these zombies. I mean, it, it it's on levels with... Um, you know, The Walking Dead and, and other films and, and movies of that nature. Um, but there's at one point the uh, what the the scratchers, I don't remember what they're called, but the, the other zombies, the bad zombies, they look like they came out of the film One Missed Call. But in this, I'm OK with that, because in One Missed Call, if you have or haven't, if you've seen that film, I mean, it doesn't work. It's just a very crappy effect in a not good film and but in this one it really does work because it's they're they're creepy enough for a comedy film but they're not like it's not like they went and went nuts with the you know production design and it's fine it really does um it it really does help the situation especially it, it helps um differentiate between the good zombies and the bad zombies i think and i did like that so he when so at the at the end of the film, um, there's this moment when Teresa Palmer is getting okay. So John Malkovich, of course, is he's like I'm going to kill all these things and all that, and he he's just this army captain that is just in charge of you know solving the problem and everything. And there's this one point where he's getting ready to kill Nicholas Holt's character, and Teresa Palmer, uh, you know, gets in the middle and defends him. And she's like, no, 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 he's alive. And like I said earlier with John Malkovich, only he could do this. He gives her this look of like he has to process what the word alive means. It's not that he's like, it's not, he doesn't give a look like he heard her and was like, oh, okay, I don't know if I'm going to do it or not. Like he has, to, it's like he has to process the actual literal definition of alive before he can decide if he's going to let him live or not i mean at the end of the day he does but it's just it's this very funny you know only john malkovich could could give you that kind of a uh a look and be like okay that's you know because he really does he just looks at her like alive what's that <laughs> like he literally was hearing it for the first time um but you know like i said i it was a fun film and i think they were smart and doing what they did because it's just it's the right amount of horror it's not really scary but it's the right amount of horror and the right amount of comedy and romance and it is that's the thing it's funny because i would if somebody wanted to consider this a romance film i'd be like yeah it is i mean it really is it's it's a rom-com with a you know halloween twist on it so uh <clears throat> And I like that. I like when films are different and unique. They don't follow the same, you know, uh, pattern that other films do. And I think that that's really interesting. And it's, it's really interesting with this film. And I like that they didn't get the traditional, you know, like leads and whatnot. You know, I don't know if Nicholas Holt's really been a lead before. I mean, I'm, he might. Be. I mean, like, I know he was in X Men First Class as Beast and all that. And Teresa Palmer, I remember her from. I believe she was in the film Take Me Home Tonight with uh, um, Tobin or Tobin, Topher Grace, I think that was her. Um, and so, and, you know, and Rob Corddry is not really, you know, the closest to a to a leading person that they have is John Malkovich. And he's not even like, 
usually the lead lead. And I did like that they did that with this film because, you know, I, I love when I love when they let, you know, maybe secondary actors or actresses get their due. And in this film, it works, uh, you know, and that's that's the cool thing, obviously. Um, I, I liked that, uh, you know, that Jonathan Levine, I'm presuming had a lot to do with the casting and all that, or at least, you know, was given the okay. I'm glad that he landed on the people he landed on because I think had it been, you know, I think had it been certain people like, okay, Jack Black, I, I mentioned him earlier off there. I'll, you know, and not, I love Jack Black. I really do. But I think had it been like a Jack Black kind of comedy, it would have been, you know, too loud and over the top and, and just, you know, oh, everyone's crazy. Ah, like Jack Black does and you love him for it. But I think in this film, it did need to have the comedy and it did need to have, you know, all that, but it needed to be subtle as well. And I think that the film really, uh, nails that because had it been somebody like Jack Black or Ben Stiller or somebody that's just kind of loud and you know boisterous I would have believed the zaniness of it but I wouldn't have believed the romantic part and that I think is what the the story really is I don't think it's you know obviously it's not a horror film really and it's not I mean it is a comedy but I think it's it's a I would classify it as a rom com, and I think the romance really shines more in this. And I think had they had somebody such as, and I understand that we need younger people, but I mean, had they had somebody like a Ben Stiller or Jack Black or somebody that's just over the top and zany and just loud and in your face, I don't think it would have worked that well. And so I think that you know getting relatively unknown actors, not unknown in the fact they don't have careers, but I mean, unknown in the fact that I don't know how many, you know, just people off the street that maybe like films, but don't really, you know, study them like I do, I think, or other people do. I think if I just go, okay, Nicholas Holt, Teresa Palmer, you know, Rob Corger, I think they'd go, who? And I could point them out and go, oh no, it's this guy. It's, it's, it's Beast from, you know, X-Men First Class. And they might go, oh, okay, fine. But I think, um, uh, just on name basis, they wouldn't know them. So not that they're unknown, but I think to the mainstream audiences of America, they know their faces more than they know their names. And I think that was a smart play with this film. And I remember, I'll admit, I remember when this came out, I did not think it looked good at all. So um, yeah, to say I was pleasantly surprised is, is an understatement. I was, I you know, I thoroughly enjoyed it actually. And I'm glad that I did. And, um, I think that films should be made like this more often. And, you know, it kind of reminded me with the horror comedy aspect, it kind of reminded me how, um, you know, the, the old Bud Abbott and Lou Costello films were, there's not like gross out humor, but there's horror in there, but it's really funny. And, you know, and, 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 and the really tricky thing too, that I think that this film did right even in Abbott and Costello films, there was a, it relied a bit more on the slapstick aspect. This film really didn't. It really was just good writing and comedic timing and all that. And I think that they, like I mentioned, I think they got a great cast for it. I think that it was well-written. Um, I think that we really, you know, these types of films, I think, unfortunately, fly under the radar so much because the premise might be weird or whatever, or they just don't look good or anything. But then I think they turn out some of the best, you know, and I think that this is going to be if it gets viewed more and, you know, give it's given the due that it deserves. I think these types of films will be, you know, more considered uh, they'll have longevity, longevity a lot more than films like There's Something About Mary or, you know, just stuff like Sh Shark Tale. For, you know, I don't know if that's just a random one, but I mean, I just think that people see those and they're like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a classic whatever. And I think that films like this really need to be uh, shown to people more. Um, and all that uh you can watch it on amazon prime that's where i watched it last night it's for free uh, i didn't look anywhere else for it because i just i'm an idiot <laughs> and but no you can watch it on amazon prime for free if you have prime uh it's definitely worth the watch guys i really recommend it thank you so much matt for recommending it because it just it was perfect timing that i did it around my halloween month and 
Uh, you mentioned it not too me long or not not long ago, and it was just perfect timing. So I figured, what the heck, I'd, I'd take a risk and and dive into it. Uh, but yes, yeah, so Matt, I hope you enjoyed the review. This review is for you. I love you. Let's get married. Um, and so, no, thanks again, seriously, for the request. Um, and so for the rest of you listening, obviously I do take requests, so throw them out there. You know, I know I've got a couple, and, and once they if they fit the themes a little more, or maybe, you know, I, did, I started that new segment where it's just kind of off the cuff, so I might do some more like that. But anyway, overall, I'd give this film a 9 out of a 10. Check it out. Let me know what you guys think, and we will continue Halloween month <sighs> till the end, which is coming up. It's still the most wonderful time of the year. Alrighty guys, take it easy. We'll be back soon.